Hey, what's up? how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. And uh, if you guys hear any like crazy sounds outside, it's I'm in New York, so I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes there's like people yelling in the street and um, whatnot, but. Cool. Try to stay focused. No worries. No worries. Well, again, thank you so much. I was just uh, kind of explaining why I wanted you on today. And, you know, the main reason is to inspire the next generation, you know, um, and and really it's just kind of allowing people to go for it. That's kind of my message yeah. I, want to, I want to give out. Hey, really, look, real quick, look at this. I know. I saw that. I saw that before. <laughs> Thanks for wearing that. I appreciate it. Yeah, for um, sure. For sure. I, I was going to, like, try and, well... I had the idea of bringing one of my old warm-ups, and uh, but then obviously I forgot. <laughs> no worries. So. I, I was like thinking back to uh, when I coached you and, and when when we were on that team, and that was ten years ago now. Crazy. I know it's so crazy. When you just said that, I was like, I can't believe that. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah. Because I was, was about ten years ago. Yeah. Sophomore, sophomore, junior. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like, like I said before to everybody, I'm just so proud of you, you know, and like the way you Thank treat you. yourself and the way you handle yourself, you know, it's just awesome to see. So that's what the, the purpose of this is, is to try to share some of that success mindset and passion and inspiration for the next generation. No, I, pre I appreciate you having me and I appreciate the players being interested. And um, I just think, you know, obviously my career went in one direction, but it could have gone a lot of ways and I think that volleyball and being part of a team and um there are so many lessons that you know not that you take for granted because I didn't but um that certain things you know until the moment you're like wow I just really am grateful for those experiences and, and opportunities that seemed very like specific in the moment for what we were doing but really like it's i mean they're life lessons that are always valuable and um are so helpful so yeah <clears throat> yeah and, and, and it's crazy how quick it goes right and you don't think about it in the moment right and then like sometimes it takes a decade and you like look back and you're like man like that was just like a special experience with a special group of people and you know sometimes when you're in it you know, like like uh, some of my players now, like it's just they go through the motions, you know. And again, like that's that's what the purpose is for today's talk. And I just wanted to provide a platform that you could just speak directly to them. You know? Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's gonna be good. Okay, cool, awesome. Well, let's do it. Yeah, let's jump in. So, G, what does living inspired mean to you? For me, I feel like I and I've said this before. You know, p people look at what I do or what they see publicly, um, you know, which is 1% of my life and the snippets when um, in terms of press and stuff like that. And I think they just assume that everything's always good all the time and, um, and that it's just easy to like be in this glamorous life or whatever. But like I, you know, like everyone else don't wake up feeling like Gigi Hadid every day, um, the Gigi Hadid that the world knows. And I think that what has helped me is taking each day to like really be tuned in with myself and that the smallest like idea or inspiration or whatever like can change your whole day, whether that's like, okay, today I want to like watercolor, today I want to learn how to build a chair to calling you can have, you can you can have the smallest thought idea and it can really get you out of a funk so i feel like inspired living is really about being in touch with yourself and not taking any piece of joy as something that's too small like i think that 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 no piece of joy is too small and it can really change your day change your week change your month change your year like there's so many people even in COVID and in quarantine that really have felt like they're in a funk and have done something to kind of change their path in life or what they what they thought and they've been unafraid to take that leap and I 
And I know that in the moment it's scary and anything that, um, anything that is worth it has a moment of discomfort, but then through that you can really like change the course of your mindset and everything. So I think inspired living is about listening to yourself and, um, doing what feels right in the moment. And that can lead to more moments. Yeah, no, I love that. I, I lo absolutely love that. I mean, you know, my, my podcast that I started in the, in COVID in shutdown was, it's all about that. It's all about living an inspired life. And I, I was thinking of you, you know, because like, there's no other person that comes to mind that's just like grabbed life, just went for it. Even when, and we'll, we'll talk about volleyball in a second, but yeah. even when you were playing, like, you were just like, I'm not tipping coach. I'm hitting, <laughs> like, I'm going. I'm like, but why? You can just, you can just smack it. <laughs> but I just, I just feel yeah. like you do that with life. You just go for it. And, and you know, the, that whole question, living an inspired life or what does inspired living mean? Like, I really want people to understand that. And, and I'm no master of this. I'm just curious about it. Right. Cause yeah. to me, I think that's the goal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just, and I'm not, and I'm not, a, I'm not a master of it either. Like yeah. I think we all have to find our own way and, um, right. That's right. Yeah. But, but to pay attention to when you feel fulfilled and like when you feel like there's a spark in you yes. is important. Yes, exactly. And, and right now, like, I just feel like that might be kind of difficult for a lot of people, um, you know, especially with social media, you know, we, and I don't really want to get into all that because that's a different conversation. But, you know, just I love what you said, just following that something that gives you a pep in your step, you know? Yeah. And, and that and doesn't, really it doesn't need to be it. Nothing's too small, you know, like that's yeah. important. And, and so, like, how do you how do you stay inspired on a day to day basis? I mean, now I have a daughter, so it's just like she is she keeps me inspired just because i I get to see her experience thing um, we kind of that same thing, like trying to do something every day that puts an extra pet, whether that's you know doing yoga or writing in my journal or um just not necessarily just being creative, but doing something that is a little bit different every day if you can. Love that. So. And congratulations to the addition of your family too. So proud of you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and can you talk about anyone specific, like who inspires you now? It's hard. Like I, I don't, I, there's so many people and I think I know. that, and it's for different reasons you know what i mean it could yeah um there's so many women to look up to and um not only that are famous or in the public eye but just walking down the street in new york and and seeing someone just like in the middle of covid just like killing their outfit you know what i mean <laughs> just like and you're just like you're clearly like probably not going anywhere like you're just doing that for yourself like you look awesome and like some might, people might think you look a bit crazy but i love it like even just like people that i don't know inspire me on the street I love um that. i saw like a video of like a ups worker just like having a little boogie to herself in the <laughs> snow and it's like little things like that i think sure. that every day we can find new people that uh inspire and encourage us to like bring something out in ourselves or yeah yeah a hundred percent could you speak on um serena williams for a second because she's i was so, gonna bring up serena yeah yeah because she inspires me just like for her uh, um, incredible legendary career but i know you guys are tight so could you just speak on her for a second yeah i mean i just i'm like you know yeah we're friends but when i'm in the stands i'm just like an embarrassing fan <laughs> um, and I don't know, like, obviously, I'm not comparing myself even in the slightest percentage to Serena Williams as an athlete, but I, when, when I watch her play tennis, it's like, that is when I most miss playing volleyball. Cause like, I feel like that fire and just like seeing her, which is, she is just like, she's 
not a freak of nature, but like a like the most epic natural being that like could be on this planet, in my opinion. That's like awesome. just watching her, like she's a machine, and and just like the passion um, that is behind her when she's playing, but then also as a friend and as a person and like when you go to karaoke with her like she has that same fire and i just think that that's so awesome and she's so funny and just so herself um but also like after a loss like she also like takes that to heart and she still cares and she's still you know it's it there's not anything jaded about her um and i i don't know i feel that like i'm sure that you remember like when i would make mistakes while playing i was really hard on myself and in certain ways that would hurt my game and that and i think that's something that we worked on a lot and that you would you know gee like no we're not going there right now like <laughs> you can just remember your face and just be like shut up coach in my head not that i would ever say that to you but um just like you know that when you're nervous still like you still care about what you're doing and i think um i love i love watching serena for that sense i can feel like i don't know that i would have hoped i had a little bit of that in me when i was a player no <laughs> well you did you did <laughs> i guess i i brought her up because and now we can get into volleyball stuff but yeah <clears throat> I, I brought her up because both of you guys remind me of that allowing yourself to go for it mentality. Right. You know, like she just allowed herself to go for it for her dreams and passions. You allow, you're allowing to yourself to go for it in your career. And I think that's a big topic for everybody, myself included, all of us, mm -hmm. we need to allow ourselves, kind of yeah. get, out, get, like, get out of our own way, so to speak, you know? Yeah, and like be, you know, I've always said, I think that a lot of athletes in general are, focused people you know what i mean and, and yeah. we're naturally determined and whatever but i think that if you get tunnel vision on one thing that you want to do and you kind of don't allow yourself to be open and therefore like ready to other opportunities then you can miss out in that sense you know what i mean and that's something that was really a blessing um from that that my mom gave me was mm. like because she started modeling so young and you know like i wanted to work even in high school and she was like i had like one-off jobs in high school but i wasn't fully signed or working full time and she was like you know we're privileged that that you don't have to be doing a job like that right now to support our family and therefore um, she, she didn't want all my eggs in one basket of like, if my modeling career doesn't happen after high school, like I need to have other possibilities and, um, volleyball was a huge, you know, um, was a huge possibility that I could have, you know, gone in and played in college. Um, so it was horseback riding and. I loved art. I could have gone to art, art school. I would have gone to cooking school, but I ended up studying criminal psychology. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, she was just like, I just had um, a mom that really never like said no or like that's, or, or made me feel weird about different interests that I had. Right. Um, and that she was really set on, you know, you're not going to sign to an agency until um, you're done with high school. And then, and I think that that let me really be, be more focused on the things that I wanted to do otherwise. And that's how I could learn so much from volleyball and everything that I did because I, I cared and I focused on it and I wanted to be the best that I could be in whatever I did. I didn't want to half-ass. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Half-ass. Yeah, yeah, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, and and I think, that. yeah, and I, and, and then, you know, whatever, whatever it was, taking an acting class here or there or whatever. So that, I don't know if you remember this, but I'm going to tell this story. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. And there's no, go more for questions, it. but so I wasn't working, like, and then one day 
I was driving home from school and like this lady in a Mini Cooper was like flagging me down on PCH. And I was like, is she okay? Like what's going on? And like, and she's like, pull over, pull over. And I was like, is something wrong with my car, whatever. So I like pulled into a grocery store parking lot and I was like, is everything okay? And she's like, I, I go to the American Film Institute and, I, and I'm doing my graduation film. I want you to audition. And I was like, what? And everyone should remember that like, no one knew, no one knew who I was in high school. Obviously I wasn't working. I was just a normal high school kid. And like, she just, I guess, saw me in the car and like knew that she wanted to cast me for her like graduation film. So I went and I auditioned for the movie and this is in the middle of one of my seasons with Aaron. And I got the part. It was a short film. I think we, we filmed for three months, but, um, it, it was something that, you know, I had never acted before, but I had to be open and confident and just kind of like take the leap. And there are, again, times that were awkward and times that were weird because I didn't know what I was doing, but you just have to learn as you go, be really aware of everything around you, taken not only being an actor, like even now with what I do, like I'm not just a model. Like I want to look at the lighting team and learn about what they're doing. I want to learn about this, the, the set design and props. And I learn something new from every part of that set all day. You know what I mean? And that was kind of the same with that. I just took it as I went and tried to take in as much information as I could and as I went. But I also respect you as a coach so much because even though you definitely didn't like just let me think that I could like whatever, go film a movie for three months and like come in and out of practice whenever I wanted. Like you were still like, no, you're a player here. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you're gonna, I don't care how long you're filming. If it starts at three in the morning, like you're gonna come to practice. And if you miss this, you're not starting in the next game. And like, you know, things like that, that you have to learn, um, you know, how to, how to work in complex situations like that. Cause that's life. And like, but I was ready when the opportunity came and it was such a random opportunity, but like, I was ready when it came. And then I like, we figured out like how to go about it. And I think also as a coach to realize that your players, not everyone is just going to become a volleyball player in the end. Right. You know what I mean? Like you were also like open to realizing that we're all going to like, maybe go to different jobs and go and have different futures. And like, yeah, although the team was important to both of us, like you also gave me the opportunity to, cause you know, if you had said no, like no straight up, no, you're not like going to start at that point, volleyball was more important to me. You know what I mean? And like, so, but it gave me a really good learning opportunity and yeah, it made, I had to work harder because I, at that point I had to homeschool for three months or do independent study um, from school. And then I was still practicing and yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that story. And yeah, I, no I, I'm like going back through that, that time because I, I was a young coach at the time and I was trying to figure out how to like, you know, get the best out of all you guys and make yeah. your experience and, and also teach life lessons that you could take beyond the court, you know, so. Yeah, it means a lot to me to hear that from you. Thank you. Okay. No worries. Thank yeah. You. Um. Well, let's jump into volleyball. Um. Because that's why I wanted you on here. Um. Mm -hmm. So thinking back to when you were playing competitive volleyball, not not mm -hmm. just at club, but at Pali too, in high school. What did you love most about it? It's hard to put words to it because it's really like a feeling that I miss. Um. And especially the years that I played for you, like I think those those teams were really special. And I mean, I think everyone feels like their team is special. And sure. maybe that, but I still really remember the girls that I played with, and um, it's something that like I hope the girls that are watching today, like I know that life feels like there's so much ahead of you, and like you're really looking forward because a lot of the the girls are going to start, you know, applying to schools or getting accepted or trying out or whatever. And it's like, it just looks so far in advance, but like to really appreciate and like, to, and not that I'm sure they are fully 
in it, but like take it in and like really um, appreciate it while you're in it. Because it's not like, you know, obviously you think it's easy, like, oh, I can just go like hop into a beach game right now or like, oh, I could go find like a, a volleyball club maybe for adults. But like, it's not as easy as you think once you're out of that system or, or a place where you have an opportunity to do that. And even if you did, even if I were to go to the beach right now and join in a game, it's just not the same as when you know everyone on your team, you know each about each other as players, you can start to build that chemistry and um, a trust and, and something behind just being on the court together. You know what I mean? And yes. I think that that's really hard to come by again. There's almost nothing like it else in life. You know what I mean? You can do so many other things. Um, but, but that's hard to replicate. It is. And it's crazy. Like how you realize that after, right? Yeah. And it's like, that's why well, I don't know. You just think like, Oh, like, I mean, even now I think like, I, I hope not that I'm going to like push her, but like, I'm definitely going to like roll a volleyball, like towards my daughter in the next couple of years and like, hope she picks it up. But like, I'm not forcing anything, but even that I'm just like, that will never be the same to me. Like, yeah, my daughter will be playing volleyball, but like, I can't be on the team, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, just that's what, that's what I miss. I miss like, it's hard to explain that feeling that you get to have when you're really like on a team, unless yeah. you're going to go to the Olympics or whatever, and that becomes your career. And that's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, I love that. Do you? That's great. Um, and, and carry that a little bit more. Like what lessons did you learn from your experience that carried over into your everyday life? So many, I mean, which starts at like being on time and like <laughs> right. respect, respecting the fact that even if your job seems like self-employed or singular, like we all work with or need other people. And it doesn't matter if you're the boss or if you're coworkers or on a, on an equal level with other people that you work with in terms of, the job title, um, no one is more important than someone else on, on that team. And like, I always, I always take that into consideration when I am working because like, yeah, I'm the, the end product that people see, but my time isn't more valuable than the catering person or the person that cleans up the studio at the end of the day, like my job wouldn't be possible without those people. So being on time and being nice and looking people in the eye and asking their name and like, those are things that I learned from being on a volleyball team where right. it's like, yeah, you might have the kill, but like that kill is not possible without every other part of what just happened on the court, whether that's um, an actual play or, or, keeping your voice up if you're on if you're on the bench you know what i mean and um i think just the repetitiveness of of doing that and um yeah and and, and the importance that you put and and coach gray and you guys were my two I, the coaches that i that i worked with the most in my volleyball career yeah shout um, out to coach gray. shout out coach gray mm -hmm. We just want to make you proud. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you played for Coach Gray too, right? I did back when I was, uh, I was that's growing so, up. That's so 13, crazy. 13 years old. Like, yeah, he's, he's just a mentor, you know? Yeah, no. A, a but I, I, I think you both, like, you were, you weren't pushover coaches. Like, I was, I still respect the shit out of you guys. You know what I mean? I still call you coach. Like, you right. know what I mean? 10 years later, and it's like that is is something that everyone can carry through their life like the people that are your mentors that help you through life are like that's what life is it's like yeah. that's what builds everything for sure and, and, and would you agree with this one g because i'm thinking like one of your biggest strengths back then and i feel like it is today too is that you can relate to others so well and that you can meet them on their level first you know, I, I just feel like that's a big skill set. Does, does that resonate with you? Thank you. A hundred percent. Like, I think, you know, when we are club players, you don't go to school with every girl that 
you play with that season. You don't know them. I mean, obviously some girls, but you don't know most of the girls through childhood. And it's like, you're all kind of put together like a band and it's like, okay, now go perform together. And you, and you have to put value in each person. You know what I mean? Right. And you have to, you have to go into that situation, like wanting to make the effort to connect with everyone on a certain level, because like, that's just going to make the whole team better. And, and like I said, not just the, the technical parts, but there's so much to do with chemistry in a team building and emotional sense. Right. It's very um, emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I, I think that social dynamic is huge and it definitely carries forward into what, whatever career people choose, you know? So, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Um, what advice would you give to the next generation of players? Like I said, appreciate it while you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I would say, Jake, whatever it is that you want to do should be kind of approached with the same mindset of professionalism. And um, my mom always said, if, you know, in my job, the looks are part of it, right? But she always said, if you're not the nicest, most hardworking girl in that room, the industry in the world is huge. Pretty doesn't really matter, right? Like, and I think that the other, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, go ahead. That's with whatever career you're going into. Like there's always like a baseline for whoever you're, you're going to be interacting or even competing against for the same job. And so if you're not the prettiest, sorry, if you're not the nicest, and most hardworking person in the room, there's going to be someone prettier, nicer, and more hardworking. So in other jobs, smarter, nicer, and more hardworking, stronger, nicer, and more hardworking, more like, like, I, I just think that like talent and whatever that baseline is, like, if you're hardworking and you're someone that's cool to be around, that sometimes can surpass your qualification of that job. Does that make sense? Yes. Like I like I I'm not like I don't I don't give my success to being prettier than anyone else in my industry. I give my success to the fact that on a lot of days like I'm the person that's going to go one more step beyond or be just like nicer to be around. And like that can make a small difference. And then like the industry will take you from there because people talk, people yeah. are all friends, people, you know, will push for you if you made a small difference in their day. And I just think that like that goes for any industry that you're in or whatever is important in that industry um, that you can't think that just because you're talented or smart doesn't mean that like you can be disrespectful and like people are just going to keep you around because you're good at what you do. That's huge. That's absolutely yeah. huge. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think that's a really good segue to, to mindset. I just have a few questions on mindset that I want you to kind of share your, your success mindset, which you're, which you're doing right now. So like, how did you create and maintain your mindset of success? which kind of carries over to just what you just said, you know, just like, yeah, that. yeah, honestly, it's, it's kind of that. And then it's, it's go, it's building on that from there, which is like, you have to always be ready for the next thing. And I think that staying inspired and being inspired helps so much with that because you, if you're always learning and you, don't settle in terms of thinking that you know everything, there's nothing left to learn, mm. then you can always build on what you already do because you're, you're adding more tools 
to your toolbox you know what yeah. i mean and then and then from there you can like do more things at this point like i've pretty much almost done every job within modeling that would equal success but it's like from there now my success to me is related to what i feel fulfilled in and what is creative and what i can be part of the process with um and right now that takes me really being like making a conscious effort to say like what inspires me what genuinely will people see in terms of creating a product or a um a series or any you know any type of output to the world that seems genuine because it's something that i have thought about and worked towards and learned about that then will that then will make sense to the people that are following me you and know what create, i mean and, and create positive impact yeah and, and that's that's why i'm so proud of you and so inspired by you because i'll just tell you i'll tell everyone a quick story like when you uh, you had you know carlos and me fly out to new york and, and do that um do the reebok event you, yeah you launched your, your line i just want to tell this quick story because it was so cool because you put shoes on everybody like the staff all the kids that were participating and there was this moment this which goes back to like allowing yourself to go for it because like i said before you, all you did was hit <laughs> you didn't say it for anything you just hit do you remember the very last thing that we did at that at that clinic so Annie McCroskey was there and she set you and and you were like, Coach, I just want to take a swing. But there was like a bunch of kids on the other side. And I me, I was just like, Oh my God, because the net was like this. Yeah, you know, yeah, the net. Yeah, bless. You, you just went up and Annie gave you like a perfect set. You like crushed this ball. I was just like, Oh my God, I hope a kid doesn't get hurt. <laughs> this Broken. Kid on the other side stepped in and like Oh my god, me. that was sick. Like like perfectly like it was like a sports center moment like da -da -da, like it just went, it, like that yeah just boom, boom and like i remember everyone just went and just hugged her and you just ran over there you're like oh my god that was amazing <laughs> yeah no that was i mean first we should talk about annie because uh if people don't know annie was the setter that um i played with and and was a setter that i had so much chemistry with like yeah yeah. as a friend and but so like she was just butter for me like I, yeah <laughs> for sure but that was 10 years later we hadn't played volleyball together in 10 years and it's Crazy. not just muscle memory it's like chemistry is a muscle memory like mm -hmm. the feeling that i that i get when like annie is setting that ball is still there you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and even thinking about that and not that I can even jump as high or or swing as hard. And like, I think, you know, after that day, I'm sore for like a few days. <laughs> muscles that I don't use, but it's there and I can do it. But yeah, to like put yourself in a situation where you're like, you give yourself the tools to then hopefully give an opportunity to other people. And then to mm -hmm. see that kid who, um, you know, their coaches were telling us that like they like volleyball but it's like a thing it's an activity that they do at school and like they don't really take it seriously and that after that day with us like they really started to care because we put them in a situation that pushed them for a second and they saw what volleyball could be on a higher level and and kind of when kids are more focused but also like forced for a second into just like probably just no one even tried to hit them that hard right <laughs> right and like when you just go off instinct for a second like she just dug it it was just <laughs> it was like magic and i was like oh my god but she hopefully felt that what what that magic is of mm -hmm. of volleyball and i think that like you know just that little spark can like really change the course of a kid's like passion path totally it made her day and i'm i'm, I'm sure she's still thinking about it to this day yeah she's like i'm a libero yeah she's like, exactly. i want to do that every day exactly 
Yeah. Um, talk a little bit, G, talk a little bit about gratitude because I, I'm, again, I'm so proud of you because of your success, but it's not just about your success. It's about how grateful you are. Um, I was watching the video of you accept your uh, Woman of the Year award. I think that was 2017. Yeah. And like you go through this list of, you know, just I'm th so thankful and so thankful. And, you know, one of the things I'm trying to pay for, you know, to the next generation of kids and it is, is to embody that gratitude. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like you do that naturally. Could you talk about that and just talk about where that comes from and, and why you're so grateful? I'm grateful because I'm, well, I should say, like, just going back to speeches that I get and the words that I get, like, you know, afterwards, while I'm writing them, and then afterwards, I might have a bit of anxiety or self-doubt where I'm like, did I talk for too long? Should I have just gone into, like, accepting the award? Does everyone really want to, like, sit here and hear who I'm grateful for? But then I'm like, I just wouldn't feel, I would just feel really awkward if I just went to accept an award about like that has to do with like the success of my entire career and just be like, thank you so much. Like, this has been fun. Like, right, right. it just wouldn't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to do that without the gratitude part because every day it doesn't mean Donatella Versace and Tommy Hilfiger and Tom Ford and all of these amazing people that are the top of the top of our bosses. It's also, like I said, the catering person, the, the stylist assistants, the guy that like repaints the white wall or the white floor every day at the studio. Like my job wouldn't be possible without that. So I just think that it's about like, being realistic. It's not really like something that like, why are you realistic? It's like, I, can, I wouldn't be yeah. able to do that without the gratitude. And I think, um, I love people that. that aren't grateful, people that aren't grateful are people that are not really like opening their eyes and looking around. Um, oh, if they think huge. that they did it on their own. And, um, I think probably like being conscious of like in situations that, that feel like they're moving really fast. There was a point in my career, like also where I was just so stressed and like over anxious that I realized things that like, now I look back on and I'm like, I wish I just like, I know I was nervous and anxious. Like, I wish I just really liked, like looked around for a second and it wasn't out of a lack of gratitude. It was really that I was like so overwhelmed by work, but I think that it would have really helped me to just look around, take a breath, like think about what it smelled like. Mm. Think about like, just slow down in the moment. I think I could have been more grateful or just more, I guess I would have been more present in that sense if I had slow down for a second. I think when you're able to slow down and like really look around and think about how many things have to come together for us to do something on a daily basis. Um, I love or have, that. Like, or have success with something. Yeah, I love that idea because like, you know, when you're having fun and you're experiencing success, everything's like this, right? It's like constant, constant, constant. But the idea of slowing down is so huge, especially now. So I, I, I love that. I have this yeah. quote that you said, um, going back to the gratitude, you say we're stronger when we celebrate each other. Yeah. And again, that's another reason why I wanted you on because that we we need to do that. That's what I'm trying to yeah. do with my project. I'm trying to celebrate people who are who are on this path of gratitude mm -hmm. and appreciation of, of, a, of authenticity. And that's the next thing I want to ask you about. Like, you're so authentic, G. And I think a lot of people look up to you because of that, like, natural authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like the world is asking for more people to be their true selves, you know, and that authentic vibe, you know. Um, can yeah. you talk a little bit about that and, and just kind of how to empower other people to be more authentic? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, in my, in, my, in my points in life where I've been the most anxious or down or, you know, trying to get it together on a daily basis or, or my hardest mental times um, are 
the times where I've kind of blocked off from not not there were times where I didn't want to like face the world you know where I was more like I, I didn't want to be as public or like I just I was like dealing with stuff myself and like I think that when I was able to then find my version of what we were talking about which is like everyone needs to find their version of like living inspired is when finally I could like give speeches like I did and and a lot of people um when I when I speak publicly or I'm I'm a good writer and I love writing speeches and I love thanking people and and telling stories and giving gratitude but I when I care a lot about that I my voice shakes mm. um and I but it, yeah it's because I cared and I think that when I would start to give speeches like that I really then tried to be open with like look I don't have like all jolly good days you know what right. I mean and I think that once that once you come out the other side and you're able to be like, okay, that was a human experience. Like now I need to like tell people how, how I, how I got to the other side and like, hopefully that like make people find their own way of, of doing that. And I think that that's where people see me for who I am because I don't always try to play like the everything's good. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. a pretty, I'm a pretty even keeled person. I think that you, I, I think I've always kind of been that way in the sense yeah. that I'm not going to overdo it for someone or like, you know, kiss ass for no reason. I just like, I'm, I, I, right. I, <laughs> try to be like as even keeled and therefore like genuine at all times um instead of yes you know trying to push something that i'm not feeling really I, you always have to be polite and you always have to um come with respect and professionalism but when i learned that as long as you're assertive and polite you never will get to a point where you feel like you're being a yes person just to make everyone else happy and then get to a point where you feel taken advantage of and then blow up on people and be someone that you don't want to be where it comes out sideways. And when I learned that, it helped me so much because in the beginning of my career, I had a hard time with, with saying no to jobs, um, telling people what I was comfortable with at times. And that was a struggle for me and i think that that's where i would then feel taken advantage of or feel like i was too in over my head because i was trying to make people happy and show that i was grateful and show that i wanted to work hard and show i deserve to be here because i know i come from privilege and i know that like you know a lot of girls that are my coworkers are literally doing this to send money home to their families and i wanted to prove that i deserved to be there with them because I have such respect for them that I would push myself too far. Um, and when I learned that, like I said, being assertive doesn't mean you're a bitch. It means that you are balanced and you know what your boundaries are. And I think that that comes off as genuine in the end, Absolutely. as long as you're polite and, uh, and like I said, professional, you can say what you want. And like it, anyone that has a problem with that is that's usually like their own problem. Right. That, that is so true. Like, I, I just want to touch on that for one more second. And I'm, I'm watching the clock too. So no, it's okay. It's fine. Trying, trying here. But um, I want you to I'll tell you when I have to like go pack. Okay. Like, okay. Sounds good. I, I wanted you to touch on FOCO because I just feel like this is a huge issue for all of us, myself included, um, fear of other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm kind of just like you you've been able to look at that and just smash that just like you smash a volleyball you're like you I know? try and yeah. like I'm glad it comes off like that but no I still like definitely care about like other people's opinions and sometimes too much but it's that's something that I work on every day where it's like why do I care about that person's opinion and there's certain people's opinions that I don't care about but 
I think that when I do care about someone's opinion, it's either like, it's, there's either a, a self-conscious or, or a realistic voice in the back of my head that's telling me something that I'm not listening to or that I'm trying to push away. Um, I think it's, I think it's important to like, look at why you care about someone else's opinion. Cause obviously it's not good to blow off everyone's opinion, right? but does that matter in the scheme of people that I respect for a reason right. that have taught me something that I look up to for like, there's certain people that you want their opinion for a reason. There's other oh. people that you have to realize don't really understand the full story. Right. And I think that that's with social media, a huge thing is like, no one's ever going to really know the full thing. And like, if you're taking people's opinions on their knowledge of 1% of what's going on, then like, it's just, it's just a waste of energy. And again, that's not something that still come, that comes easy to me. I still have to work on that because you can look through a hundred co positive comments and you remember the one negative one. Right. Um, right. Right. But also like being realistic. Like now I know when I go into an interview, um, I mean, obviously I know what I, what I'm willing to or not willing to talk about, but also you have to realize like, whatever you say, there's going to be someone that has a problem with what you say or how you do it or whatever. And, um, you can't please everyone ever. Totally. It's just I, <laughs> I think, I think that skill set of having tunnel vision as well as being open to people that, that can inspire you and can help yeah. you with your journey. I think that's the balance that I'm talking about here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's just talk about impact. I know a big part of you and, and your life and your career is about creating that positive impact. Can you just talk quickly about a couple things like like the causes that you're a part of, like the you know pencils of promise, UNICEF, you know you went to Bangladesh. Can you just touch on those things? A yeah. Bit? Um. Well. I think at one point, like I said, you get to a place where you have to make it about something other than yourself and you have to be like, okay, these are like all the, you know, I think I like writing down and making like goals and lists and whatever. And you have to get to a place where in your career, you're like asking for more would be greedy. Mm. Like I at some point you have to start putting your energy towards people other than yourself. Um, and not only, not only in terms of, and that doesn't mean that you don't continue to like have goals or, or push for them, but like, do I need to do this same magazine for the seventh time? Or can mm -hmm. I take that time to go to UNICEF, go with UNICEF on a trip? You know what I mean? Like those things that I started to realize, like, I don't, there are just things that would be more fulfilling and more interesting. Um, and more of a, I don't know. Impact. More important. Yeah. More impactful. Yeah. And, um, when I went to UNICEF, you know, they were like, is there one region or one, um, issue that you want to focus on? Yeah. And again, like at that point I was, you have to be a student and you have to say like, or at least for me, I was like, send me wherever you want for whatever, you know, issues that they're facing. Like I am, I want to go learn. And you also have to look at that not as that you are going to help those people that's not how i look at it i look at it as i'm going to be a bridge for that area or that community to have a voice to the rest of the world and wow. like and and something that the at the time when I first um, started working with UNICEF and, and going on um, field trips were like field visits were 
I did one with the CEO, Carol Stern. And she told, she said that the first thing she always asks people when you go to meet people um, on these visits is instead of like normal questions that maybe you would think to ask, like just to say, what do you want the world to know about you? Like to stop assuming that we know what they want or need or would be comfortable with just because that's what we are comfortable with. Um, And that's also something that I listened to and learned a lot about during um, a lot of people's sharing, like during the Black Lives Matter movement was like, as a white passing person, like, yeah, my dad's Arab, but like as someone coming into a situation where you assume you're the helper, like you're there to help or be the savior. Like that's not what it is. It's like, you don't know what that person needs. You have to create a relationship with that person and find out the best way that they need help. You can't assume. And I think that that's, whether that's with UNICEF or Pencil of Promise, um, obviously Pencil of Promise was, more of a, a money raising thing through uh collaborations that i had that then went towards building a school um for pencils of promise but like i would like to go obviously visit that school after covid uh restrictions are down and, and be able to ask them what do you still need at this school and really it's it's not assuming you, you can't assume you have to go in and be um really a a catalyst of change. Yeah, you yeah, you have to be a tool for them. You're yes. not you're not there to uh self promote. It's not about you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I absolutely love that G and I want to be a part of that moving forward. Like I wanna go and, and help with volleyball awesome. and, and like really spread, you know, the joy of volleyball to a bunch of these kids all over the place. And I'm so proud of you for doing that and I think one last thing on that point, like when you got back from Bangladesh, I think you, I think I saw you say some somewhere that, like you, you, you were able to come back home, and you got emotional because you're like they're still there. You yeah, know, it gives you that perspective, right? And like we, we all get caught up in our problems and our our stuff, right? Yeah. But when you when you go experience something like that and you see a a, a refugee camp that that's that it's that big. That's yeah. Well, that was that was for that specific trip because yeah. Obviously, like, another example, like, when I went, when I went to just visit villages, like, that's where that, that's where those people live. They're happy living there. That's where they want to live. That's not like, oh, because we don't live in a city like New York that, like, therefore, like, my life is better. They're happy in that life. They, you know, we ask, like, what do you need help with? And they're like, we just want, like, a well with clean water. Besides that, we're happy living our lives. Um, so that wasn't to say, oh, like my life is here. And if, if you, if you live in a village somewhere that, that that's here, that right, was right. only, that was only to relate to the refugee camp because obviously those people want to go home. Right. They don't want to be refugees and right. they don't, they, they want citizenship and they want to exist on paper and and that was the hardest part where it's like UNICEF does so much and and I really you know the complexities of really everything they do from education to water safety and um and just and they they do everything but they can only do so much in terms of they have to be invited by a government to help and then they can only go so far you know what I mean like when people are asking when you say, what, what do you need? What can I help with? What can I go back and tell UNICEF America that like, we really need to put funding towards They're Like we want a passport. And that's what's sad is like, you also realize that like, you can only like do so much really. Um, and I think that's why I was emotional at, at that point. Cause like, there's also, there's also times where like, I can't look a girl in the eyes and promise that I'm going to help her get a citizenship. Like, I just know that like my reach only goes so far. So 
it's tough. Right. In well, for the, situations. No, for sure. Well, for those that, that want to be involved, um, that don't quite know how, you know, anyone listening to this right now, what, what, are, the, what are some ways we can get involved with some bigger, some bigger causes like that? Um, well, I know that for UNICEF, you can go online um, to become a volunteer and there's different, um, I think you can maybe choose what you're interested in, in terms of, like I said, regions or issues. Um, and I think that there's then a, a process um, to become um, part of that, okay. that club. Um, and then, but we also have to start like in our backyards and i right. think that people look at a unicef trip because we all grew up you know trick-or-treating with our unicef coin box mm. that like that me like it's like an aspirational version of like helping and and doing but then because that's like oh that's overseas somewhere we forget like to look at our sidewalk and um yeah and see what's what's happening so it's like you also everyone can be creative in their own way and whether that's a community pantry or fridge or just to go um just to go talk to people mm. like it doesn't have to be about money or um Love that. what you can give in terms of like wealth or material things you can also like if you're good at this is an example that my friend Sophia Rowe gave when she was talking about helping um, like black businesses in your neighborhood, like that you can go and, and just start a relationship with the, with the shop owner. Right. And, and don't right away ask, how can I help or whatever? It's like, you can go learn about that and she'll be like, Oh, I just really need like, um, I just, I just really want more customers, right? If you're good at designing posters and like, you just want to like draw a poster for her and go copy a hundred posters at like the, the FedEx store and then yeah. go give, you know, give them around. It, it doesn't take like what sometimes we think is obvious ways to help. It's like yeah. little things that you can, lend your talent or even just to teach her or or make her an instagram account right for her right. plant store you know what i mean um so to be creative with what you're good at and and to give um and to give that yeah in, in small ways is, is good I, too. I absolutely love that to me that that, that means project help each other right like that's yeah. something that i come up with and and i love that you use your platform to continue to do that so good on you for that keep doing it you know as your platform gets bigger and bigger and your, your reach keeps expanding like keep keep that message going and that's something for me too like we we as leaders because you you remind me of inspired leadership that's another uh, little phrase i came up with. you know like like we as leaders we need to keep branching out keep expressing that message you know and it's just so powerful right now more than ever you know mm -hmm. no for sure but yeah thanks Gee, for having me i really appreciate it absolutely do you have like two more minutes i can like, yeah. read through yeah. a couple of player questions here yeah um i wanted to give my players a chance uh to ask you some questions so this first one is from nicole rich shout out nicole uh she asks what do you do to de um i love to like cook go on walks do yoga um and that's kind of like part of the being inspired part like i think that doing things that are only to inspire in a small way or fulfill yourself in some way is to take time for yourself and to like show yourself love and i think that that's not only inspiring and can change your mindset but i think that's also calming and relaxing and a way to unwind so i think that it can do both things Love if there's that. you know if, if it's not to go towards something you don't have to you don't have to paint a perfect picture to hang on a wall it's just to paint like just yeah. do it to do it and like to yeah yeah, well, I, I love that, dude, because stress, that's an underlying thing we didn't really talk about, but stress is big right now for, for kids. Yeah. Right? 
especially with social media, they're always watching other people do stuff. And then they're like trying to figure out what they're doing. And yeah. like, oh, it's, it could be stressful. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a huge one. Um, we already, we kind of already uh, covered this, but I'm going to give a shout out to Reese Ty Sandoval. She asked, in what ways did sports influence you to feel the need or want to inspire others in your future? Good question. Um, I think just realizing that like little moments of people's time, whether that was, you know, coaches that I had, or I remember, I can't remember who it was. Maybe you would remember, but I remember like one time, like just like this team USA coach and one of the players like came to watch us practice at some tournament or like warm up at some tournament. Maybe they even mm -hmm. watched us play. And like, I don't remember who that coach was or who that player was, but just that someone gave the energy to us was meaningful. Mm, um, and just like took the time for us when like, you know, they could have been anywhere doing anything. Totally. So I think just, just to realize that when you have time and when you give that to others, like it might not seem like that big of a deal, but like maybe it will be for someone or something. It's exactly, exactly what you're doing right now, right? Like, like you're, you're doing it. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Hey, you. You're an inspiration to, you so much, uh, to everyone, to me. I appreciate you. you. I respect you. We should do this again sometime. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, thank you for me personally, but I, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of all your players. We appreciate your passion as a coach and all the time that you put in. And um, I know that wherever they go, whether that's professional volleyball or other careers, that we can always use what we learn from our coaches. So respect your coach, y'all. And yeah. Thank you, G. I really thank you. Have a good one. All right, one. we'll talk soon, all right? Yeah, yeah. Bye. Okay.